a lot of people have been running places for people with disabilities and people with mental health problems for years and years using anything to do with the land, farming, forestry, um, horticulture as a means of therapy. But until about three years ago we didn't actually have a title for ourselves and people were, were quite isolated. There was no national association for people to, to meet at. But um, the, the concept of care farming yeah. came over from, from Holland uh, and, and now all of us isolated people are, are beginning to be able to get together, share good practice and also we're, we're starting to establish new care farms. And it can be, it can be any, any sort of therapy on land, it could be a half acre allotment plot up in Birmingham, it could be um, people accessing a you know, five, six hundred hectare farm and anything in between. So it's really it's just using the land for therapy and training. One person in my group today has been here about three years. He's got mild autism and he was very, very quiet when he first came. Uh, spent a lot of time sort of staring into space and not making eye contact. And now he's interacting with the group. He's, he's, he's t talking or he's formed friendships. And uh, I think that's, that's, the, that's the nicest thing. And it's not just the skills of of learning how, how to sow seeds or take cuttings, although people do do demonstrate learning. Uh, but it but it's the, if you like, the more important underlying benefits, I think, like you see people, uh, people's self-confidence increasing. Uh, people will start interacting more with other members of the group. Well, our biggest uh, number of students is adults with severe learning disabilities, so they come in from day centres, um, from social services. Uh, but we also work with um, colleges, so we have younger people, 16 to 19, often with some sort of learning disability. And then we work with pupil referral units and mainstream schools, and that's very often youngsters who just have difficulty in accessing national curriculum and a better practical work that we can obviously provide out here. We've got to go and um, do some harvesting. Can you hold on to that for me? Uh, we've got a lot of mixed um, groups in today. I've got quite a mixed group. I've got a student in a wheelchair, another one who comes with two carers. And this group here at the moment um, are picking some of the very last spinach of the season and it's going to go into the kitchen to be made into curry. We've got a very good volunteer in today who's uh, very lively in the kitchen and uh, he'll get something really tasty made out of it. Oh, yeah. oh, fantastic! So you've just picked this, have you? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's brilliant. Just what we need. We'll cook that up, we'll have that with our lunch. There are a number of outcomes for the students from working in the kitchens. They're learning important skills for the home. They're learning independence, they're learning teamwork, and of course they're doing it in a way that is ultimately pleasurable because there's a product and an outcome to it. Yeah, what have you done with those then, Colin? Cut them up with small pieces. Oh, and yeah. what's happened to them there? For some of them, it is about getting a qualification. So the group that I've got today are, are quite able and they're doing a, a level one course. And, and uh, when they achieve a qualification, when perhaps they've, got, they've had absolutely nothing at school, um, they really, they're so excited about actually having a nationally recognised qualification. For other, other people, it, it's, it's more the therapeutic side. So here, although we're a very small site, there is, the way we've designed it, there are lots of different little areas to work in. Personal budgets uh, is a new way of, of funding people. Um, basically, people are, it's worked out how much a person needs uh, to live and to access day, day opportunities and so on and, and, and possibly um, holidays and, and so on. So they're given a figure for the whole year and they can then go to suppliers like ourselves um, and, and buy service. So um, we make, we make a, a daily charge obviously so that we can pay our staff and so on. And we've got three groups now uh, made up of people who have their own individual budgets. Have a look at the baby. We just had um, salmon piglets and they were born about half past twelve. And we um, said this morning she was um, 24 hours to give birth. 
and after dinner she just about um, give birth. Proud, really pleased. I am glad for her. I think it can bring lots of, of the parts of the community together. I mean, uh, people with learning disabilities and lads with challenging behaviour still tend to get hidden away a bit sometimes. And here, um, they're actually working together. So it, it's, it's almost like a mini community in itself here. And the, and the boys discover that they're actually not the least able, they're not the bottom of the pile, and they see some of the adults. Um, and you, you get friendships happening between the lads and, and some of the older the adults. You see tough, tough boys who've been kicked out of school, pushing people around in wheelchairs and, and showing a real um, tender side of their, of their nature. It's so you sitting at home and you mix with all your friends and you get involved with all different activities here. And that what I enjoy is coming here. It's given me a lot more confidence because I was very nervous before I started coming here. But now I really enjoy coming. Oh, I've got a lot to do. It, it's fantastic here. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> We're here to offer people therapeutic opportunities, uh, skills training, and being able to engage in, in meaningful tasks and activities. Um, and we're also here to provide a, a very supportive social environment uh, where, where people can, can interact and, and be valued, um, whatever their abilities or disabilities. <laughs>